the Bud Light Jaguar team. After leading most of the race, Davy Jones, Jack broke down, almost taking teammate Raul Boisel with him. But the incident eventually gave Boisel the undisputed lead. That is until Tom Kendall of Jim Miller's Chevrolet team caught up to him in the last two laps. The two battled in the Miami Heat and wrote their names in the IMSA history books. The Jaguar and the Chevy. Each time Kendall would threaten, Boisel would slam the door shut. It wasn't until the final turn when Boisel took the checker and the ninth Miami championship. The victory bringing celebration in the Jaguar pits. Round two was on the road course of Mid-Ohio, and like most sequels, it had the same scenario, but with a different cast. This time it was Boisel's Jaguar teammate Davy Jones versus Kendall Chevy teammate Wayne Taylor in the revolutionary Intrepid. But try as he might, Taylor couldn't win out over the consistent Bud Light Jaguar team and Davey Jones. He crossed the finish line under the watchful eye of his cheering crew. Team Jaguar had taken two duels of the Nissan Triple Crown. Could they make it three? Now the GTP cars move back to the streets, but this time these streets border the banks and bayous of the Mississippi, New Orleans, Louisiana. The best prototype drivers and teams have gone Cajun for this, the inaugural Grand Prix de Mardi Gras. Like factory spice driver Perry McCarthy, who sits on the pole today. And Nissan Triple Crown Point leader Raul Boisel and teammate Mid-Ohio champion J.B. Jones. Like Chevy Intrepid driver Wayne Taylor, who will try to win a GTP race for the first time in an American-made, American-built car since 1977. And teammate Tom Kendall, recent UCLA grad, who decided to forego his Los Angeles commencement today to race in New Orleans. But never count out Team Nissan and three-time national champion Jeff Brabham and current GTP points leader Chip Robinson. It's the finale of the Triple Crown. The Battle of New Orleans. did resume rain and flooding prevented the teams from getting a good feel for the course but finally the sun has come out and now it's party time in the french quarter it's normal louise 
Louisiana weather. Hot and muggy as the cars are on the grid. And we are just about set to go. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Joel Myers, and welcome to the Nissan Triple Crown of IMSA, as today it's the final leg, the Grand Prix de Mardi Gras. With us on our coverage once again today, an 11-year veteran of the sport, has been behind the wheel many, many times in races just like this, Bill Adam and Bill. Again, two divisions racing at the same time, but subtle changes in the cars since the first time we saw them in Miami. Well, our two divisions are the most exotic sports cars in the world. The GTP cars, these are the big ones, the turbocharged 800 horsepower cars, capable of more than 200 miles an hour in long straights. But alongside of these cars is the light division, a car that essentially looks the same but is not permitted to have a turbocharger and is given a little bit of a weight penalty. They sometimes run 350 to 400 horsepower and are very competitive in their own class. Now these evolutionary changes, they are not just changes year to year as some cars go, but from track to track. Miami, we saw Jaguar come out and dominate that race, but they felt that wasn't good enough. Mid-Ohio, they suddenly turned up with a car that sprouted wings all over, a new wing on the front, a biplane wing off the back end. Down here, Nissan has unveiled their secret weapon, their great periscopes up off the car to try and duck some cool, fresh air into it. Now, a surprise going into the race this afternoon, and that has to do with the pole sitter. It's not Tommy Kendall or Wayne Taylor from the Chevy Intrepid team, not Davy Jones or Raul Boisel from Team Jaguar, but from the Spice team, Perry McCarthy. I think Perry maybe showed some of his talent last year. He turned up at Del Mar, an unknown, and put the spice on the pole. He is brilliant on a street course. Perry does test driving for spice in Europe and obviously is not intimidated running 100 miles an hour an inch off that wall. So he is going to be a major factor today. The biggest story, though, has to do with the course and the condition of this course in New Orleans. With more on that story, let's check in now with Rick DeBruel. Anytime you take a group of streets and you turn it into a race course, you create a whole new group of problems for the drivers. Here in New Orleans, they had to bring out 1,600 concrete barriers to line the racetrack. Each one of these weighs 4,000 pounds apiece. So if a car hits it, it won't give. That also means it's not very forgiving for a driver who gets offline and taps one of these. It can do serious damage to a car. But that's not the only thing they have to be concerned about. There are also 175 manhole covers all around this course. Now, each one of these has been welded down with spot welds so it won't come up. But every place there's a manhole cover, there's a bump or a dip. That's brutal on the suspension and brutal on the drivers. Throw in all the assorted bumps and ridges along streets as old as they are here in New Orleans, and it becomes a battle just to survive the street. But that's not the only thing they're going to have to survive here. And with that story is my pit row colleague, Brian Hammonds. Thank you, Rick. And continuing with your battle theme, historians will remember the Battle of New Orleans. And today in New Orleans, half the battle is the tremendous heat. Perry McCarthy will start this race on the pole. And Perry, how will you battle the heat? I'm not really sure yet myself. I mean, it really is very warm in there. Uh, I think I'm just going to grip hang on, bite my teeth, scream, yell, whatever it takes, and try and come through it because, you know, I'm wearing a cool suit. That does so much for me. And I don't know. I've just got to try and do the rest. I've got to try and not exert myself too much, but at the same time, I need to exert myself enough to keep the others behind me, and they're going to be tough, you know? You've raised a few eyebrows by putting the Chevrolet Spice on the pole, but you're surprised, are you? Well, I, I just thought, you know, I... I always believe I can do it if things work for me. And uh, it worked for me today. We did it. So uh, here we go. And I think we're off now. So hello, America, and wish me luck. OK, thank you. The weather is definitely going to be a factor today. Temperature right now at 88 degrees, high humidity, and they are predicting rain for later this afternoon. Bill, let's take a look at this very tight course now with a number of 90 degree turns. Our start line in this 1.3 mile track will be on Poydra Street, a very short straight. We only reach speeds of 125 miles an hour and extremely heavy braking down here. A 90 degree corner will lead us through here. It's very difficult to get powered out of the ground. This is a bumpy section of track and another very short straight. And here, Canal Street now takes over and we're all the way down to first gear. Feet power in gently, second gear, third gear, but immediately hard back on the brakes again. Feeds into Magazine Street. Now we have to be careful going down here. Bumps all over the place. Third gear, fourth, just for a little flash, heavy on the brakes there. We're back down to third gear. Feeds us back onto Poydra Street. 
another little flash up to fourth gear here before you're back on the brakes once again. 90 degree left hand turn on a Peter Street. We have to feed power in careful here. The car wants to get over up against the wall. Briefly into third gear because you're heavy on the brakes. And once again, we're back down into first gear. We're on Canal Street now, right in front of the pit. Second gear, third gear, little stab on the brakes. A very quick right-hander here that runs below the atrium underneath Rivergate. And our final corner leads us back out of Pointers once again to complete our lap at the Nissan Grand Prix de Mardi Gras. Gentlemen, start your engine. Prominent New Orleans businessman Sam Levy getting it all underway as we're ready to go with the inaugural Grand Prix de Mardi Gras. And the bowl sitter sitting in his spice, the picture of concentration, Perry McCarthy. And there is so much pressure on the drivers, Bill just mentioned, because this 1.3 mile course has so many 90 degree turns. And not only it's out of the course, but it is a difficult proposition even getting into pit row. We are just about ready to go. Be right back with a starting grid. Welcome back to the final leg of the Nissan Triple Crown of IMSA's. It's the Grand Prix de Mardi Gras, the streets of New Orleans. The point standings have Raul Boisel slightly ahead of Tom Kendall after two of the three races. Davey Jones, Jeff Rabham, Wayne Taylor all have a chance with a victory today to pick up that Tiffany Trophy. The unique aspect of this race, the garage, the paddock area, indoors, which definitely makes a lot of sense with all the rain that they've seen over the last few days. And it is the final leg of the Nissan Triple Crown of IMSA, but it is the ninth race in the overall series of 14 races. As we look at the Castrol starting grid now, brought to you by Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. Bill, let's take a look at the guys up front. On the pole, Perry McCarthy from England driving that number 33 Spice Chevrolet. Once again, showing he is a serious force to be reckoned with on a street circuit. But alongside last year's champion, Jeff Brabham driving the number 83 Nissan, Jeff from Australia, now living in Central Florida. Jeff's teammate, Chip Robinson, drives the number 84 Nissan. He is in the inside of row two. On the outside, Tom Candle from California driving the number 65 Chevrolet Intrepid, the fastest of the teammates. Row three, number two Jaguar of Davy Jones. Now, Davy did win our last race, and he has a lot to prove at this one as well. Alongside Davies, number 99, Juan Fangio in the first of the Toyotas. A little bit of a surprise. They have not been quick this year, but watch out. Wayne Taylor on the inside of row four and the number 64 Chevy Intrepid. Wayne is hungry for this one. He will be a charger. Outside, the number three Jaguar of Raul Boisel would love to follow up the Miami win with a win here today. Row five has number 98, Rocky Moran, the second team Toyota. And alongside the fastest qualifier in the light division, the number 48 Acura of Parker Johnstone. A remarkable story as his eighth pole in nine races. Row six, number five car of Jeff Perner. Part of the Tom Milner racing team, maybe the first of the true independent runners. And alongside the number nine light of Jim Pace, a local favorite all the way from Jackson, Mississippi. And rounding out the Castrol starting grid in row seven, Brian Bonner, Charles Morgan. Row eight has David Tennyson alongside of the team of Naughton Velez. And finally in row nine, Bob Earl and Hugh Fuller. We'll be on board a couple of cars looking out of the camera right now. Chip Robinson's car number 84 and also Raul Boisel. Well, the full hitter, Perry McCarthy. With more on the young man from England, let's check in with Rick DeBruel. Well, Perry McCarthy may have been fast all weekend, but that does not mean it was trouble-free. During this morning's qualifying session, the car kept jumping out of third gear. Turned out there was a problem with a small ball bearing about that big. It wasn't machined properly. As a result, that gear kept jumping out. They found it, they fixed it. It means that he should have a pretty good time at the start of this race. We are just about ready to go with the very first Nissan Grand Prix de Mardi Gras Bill strategy very early for the drivers as they get ready. Well, as we watch the pace car just pull off the track, the initial strategy we just simply keep the car off the wall. The tires will not be up to temperature, not really getting good grip yet. So what they want to do is to be very careful. That's number one. And once they finally get those tires up to temperature, they may have to take them right off with the high humidity and the chance of rain today. They may need to go to those rain tires. They're looking for the green flag. And they get it. The first ever race on the streets of New Orleans is underway. Now, we just saw something there we have not seen before. The cars were not lined up side by side. But two reasons. Harry McCarthy is the pole sitter. It is up to him to set the pace. Also, IMSA is not going to restart a race like this because by being in single file, it's actually a lot safer. 
Barry McCarthy just in front of Jeff Brabham and Jim Robinson, the two from Team Nissan. And look at those scoops. We were talking about some of the changes that we've seen over the last few weeks in these cars, and you could really see it on the two Nissans. Yes, the, the evolutionary process continues. The Nissan team have put these scoops on to try and get just an extra little bit of cooling air down into the motors. On a track like this, because the, the speeds are relatively so low, you don't get the same blast of fresh air going in. This will sometimes help to ram air down there, just, just keep the engines that much pressure. So with one lap now under their belts, Perry McCarthy trying to open up some daylight on the two from Team Nissan. That's Jeff Rabble, followed by Chip Robinson. There's the Jaguar of Davy Jones. Juan Fangio the second. The Chevy's closely following. Look at the cars coming down the straight. You can see that they're wiggling a little bit, but basically all of these drivers are being conservative at this point. They're trying to be as neat as possible, and they hug the middle of the track to avoid the, the berming over the intersections. These are the crowns in the roadways, and when you hit crown to crown, there's a tremendous jolt for these cars. They're trying to work with two inches of ground clearance as we have the first car out of the race already. That's Hugh Fuller in the light division, and he barely got through one lap. Well, it's very disappointing, but, but certainly not surprising, as he did suffer problems throughout qualifying. So one down very early as Gray McCarthy continues to stay on top of Jeff Rabble and Chip Robinson. Harry has been spectacular here. He is continually sliding that spice closer to these walls than any other driver. So after two laps, Perry McCarthy is the leader on top of Jeff Rabham and Chip Robinson. Davey Jones not far behind. This course runs right alongside the Aquarium of the Americas in beautiful New Orleans. We'll be right back. We are on board the Jaguar of Raul Boisel, the winner of the Nissan Grand Prix of Miami. Currently right now in eighth place in the Grand Prix de Mardi Gras. And, Bill, you can really get an idea of the vibrations, the jolts that he's experiencing, and all the other drivers, all those manhole covers, all those little ruts and ridges in this course makes it very difficult. It really does. And, and what the problem is that you're sitting at 130, 140 degrees of heat. You're covered in by these multiple layer driving suits. And that helmet that originally starts out weighing, oh, say, 40 ounces, by the end of this race, it'll feel like 40 pounds. Right now, we're looking at the battle for seventh place as Boisel is trying to overtake Tom Kendall in the Chevy Intrepid. Now, the Intrepid's very supple suspension that we have seen in past events may help these drivers here. It seems to absorb the bumps. Again, you made note of, of the pounding the drivers are taking. Now, look up ahead. You see sparks coming out from underneath Kendall's car. This is when the car is hitting some of these bumps. Boisel's wheel all crossed up there in the corner. And look at his helmet just slamming around here. Just incredible forces being transmitted through to these drivers. There's the leader, Perry McCarthy, trying to open up some daylight right now on car number 83, the Nissan of Jeff Brabham. Look at the way it slid almost into the wall. Brabham's car had nothing between that rear wing and the wall. He used up every last inch of roadway. This is a major problem. Again, at a track like Mid-Ohio where we watched them, you can make a mistake, spin off like what Chip Robinson did, but here, if you spin one inch too wide, you're into the concrete wall. It is not forgiving at all. And this race, more than the first two we watched, Bill, they put a lot of pressure on their brakes. The brakes take a tremendous pounding here because of the temperatures involved. They're running to 125 miles an hour, back down to 25, and yet don't have the benefit of that long straight to cool them. So the temperatures that they're developing are much greater than any other circuit they will run on this year. There is the lights leader, Parker Johnstone. Redmond, Oregon, what an amazing stat he is putting together this year, taking six of the first eight races in his division. An amazing bit of driving going on right here as well. The two cars that he is in front of, those blue cars, are full GT prototype cars with perhaps 300 horsepower more. But because Parker's car is so well-suited this track, so nimble, it really doesn't suffer any sort of a disadvantage. Parker Johnson with a slight edge right now over Jeff Herner and his teammate Brian Bonner. And for those gentlemen to stay cool this afternoon, they've got to work with some unique suits that Rick DeBrule earlier had a chance to take a look at. 
frankly, in this world of high-tech racing, one of the most critical pieces on the car is actually one of the simplest. What I'm wearing is a cool suit. It's a special vest designed to help keep the driver from overheating while he's in the race. He wears this underneath his fire suit. It's filled with small plastic tubes. And in those tubes is a kind of antifreeze that gets pumped out of these tubes. Inside the race car is a small ice chest and a pump that keeps the cold fluid circulating throughout the entire race. They even have a skull cap that they use to keep his head cool. Now, that's great for the race car driver, but on the Applebee's racing team, for example, they have a second driver who's waiting in the pits to go out. And while he's waiting, he's overheating. So they developed a sort of portable cooling system. This is it right here. It uses the same ice chest, the same pump. While he's standing in the pits, he simply flicks this switch and stays cool while he's waiting to go out. Now, the one problem with this system, if it fails, if it breaks down, this can actually make the driver even hotter. So, without a doubt, as we look at the leader, Perry McCarthy, that is the worst of all possible scenarios. An even warmer situation for the drivers in these very hot, humid conditions. There's that battle for seventh place. It rages on. Tom Kendall, just slightly ahead of Raul Boisel. These cars may be following a team order because even though they're losing a little ground, you try and save one of your cars in case this rough track takes a toll on the faster car. Back in with Raul Boisel. He's see Tommy. Oh, and Parker Johnstone is coming into the pits. An unexpected stop this early in the race. And with them now trying to remove the nose of the car, I would expect that it's some sort of a brake problem. Let's just see the master cylinders and the clutch cylinder. That's exactly what they're looking at. They're looking in the area where the master cylinder is located. The steam and the smoke you can see coming out from the brakes. Again, this tremendous temperature that we talked about earlier. They're taking a wheel off. That won't be a master cylinder problem. It's got to be some sort of a problem with the caliper itself on there. Yes, you can see, he just pointed at something. There was a caliper problem on his left front brake. The battle for seventh place, Tom Kendall, still maintaining his edge on Raul Boisel. As the two head down, you can see Canal Street here in New Orleans. When the cars come towards us, we really can see just how rough this track is. These cars are set up with springs that you would never consider running in your streetcar. Just going over a little bit of paper there and blowing it into smithereens. Heavy braking, turning in the corner, and it always seems like there's bumps at the exits of the corner, which what that wants to do is to unload the car and kick the back wheels off the ground. When you're trying to put down seven or 800 horsepower, as soon as you get the wheels light, the car is going to pitch sideways on you. We can watch, too, the bumps as, as the tack you just get used to this. Look at the car just bouncing around violently. And look at Kendall, he's slowing down over to the left. So Boisel does make that pass. Is Tommy Kendall obviously experiencing problems at this early stage of the race? Well, the intrepid crew were concerned earlier about brake temperatures, and I wonder if Tommy had decided to slow his pace even further. Obviously, the car is still going on. There's nothing wrong with the car. And that was in a very unusual area of the track and braking. Let's find out the latest on the intrepid team, and Tom Kendall in particular, with Brian Hammonds. Dan Binks, the crew chief for Tommy Kendall, who's been backpedaling somewhat at the start. Is everything, everything okay with that car? Uh, the brakes are a little bit of a problem right this second. Uh, we tried a couple things, and it just wasn't enough. Uh, it's going to be rided out from here, I guess. Is this something that can be fixed during a pit stop? Maybe. I don't know. Wait and see. Nail-biting time now for the Chevrolet Intrepid team. So problems for Chevy very early, and Tom Kendall. And there is the new lights leader, David Tennyson, who has taken over that lights lead when Parker Johnstone went for the pits. As Tennyson is looking for his first solo win, only 22 years old. Let's find out what happened to Parker Johnstone with Rick DeBrule. Well, Doug Peterson is the team owner for the Acura. What was wrong? Why did Parker have to come in? He had a brake problem, the front brake, so we're not sure whether it's a master cylinder problem or a brake bleeder screw is left loose. We're not sure. I think it was just a... We think it's a master cylinder. We had no indication of this. A lot of the teams are talking about the fact that this circuit is so hard on brakes. Is this associated with that? Well, we haven't had any braking problems up till now. So it wasn't hard on us. And uh, like I say, we think it might just be a master cylinder failure, which is just one of those things. Brakes an early problem as we look out of the back of the car of Chip Robinson. Rain on the back side of the course. Possible rain on the back side of the course. Definite rain, not possible. Definite not possible as Chip Robinson responds to his crew. And 
Rain is on its way into Orleans. Juan oh. Fangio, the second, making a move, and he clips Jim Pace. Juan got in way too deep. You can see the back of that car dancing on a little bit under braking, going over the bumps here. Very light contact, the only locked position or two. So now a dilemma for the drivers and their crews when or if they need to make a change to rain tires as opposed to their racing slicks. The leaderboard with Perry McCarthy still leading Jeff Rabham over the lights. It's David Tennyson on top of Charles Morgan. Car number 33, the leader, Perry McCarthy, lapping Parker Johnstone. McCarthy getting a bit squirrely, having problems here coming into the corner. Big problems coming in. There's a yellow and red flag in the background showing a slippery condition. I guess the track is really starting to deteriorate with this very light rain. And look at Jeff Brabham. He's sliding into this corner, too. He's good. Now he stopped before he hit McCarthy, but they did come to a dead stop. But... Perry McCarthy still maintains that lead on Jeff Brabham as the rain starts to fall in New Orleans. This is, beyond a doubt, the most dangerous time in these cars. The slicks are hot, but are not... Get oh, and look at this! It's a spin by the number 99 Toyota has gone right straight through. That's Juan Fangio. He hit the wall fairly hard. This will definitely put him out of the race. So the problems now, when do you make the move? You're on slicks now. Do you go to the rain tires right away? Perry McCarthy. As Juan Fangio the second is definitely out of the race, appears to be okay, which is good news. Yeah, Juan is just turning off the car. He's making sure all the electrical switches are off, so there's no danger of fire. And look at Perry's car. Just, and grab him in the background, too. They're snaking down the straight. Let's go down to Richter Rule. Well, with rain on a part of the course, it leaves the team in a quandary. They're not quite sure what to do. They have brought rain tires with them. They are ready to come in and change the tires if they need to. The problem is they don't want to change if it's too soon. If the track dries out, having these rain tires on is going to be a serious problem. We're looking out of the back of the car of Chip Robinson in his Nissan, currently running fourth, just barely ahead of Wayne Taylor in fifth, and you can see the way... The rain is picking up and becoming much, much more of a factor. Look at the spray that Taylor has to deal with. Brian, what's the weather look like? Does it look like it's going to get worse or stay the same or what? It's starting to rain right here now. It looks like it may get worse. It may get worse. Chip Robinson in communication with his crew once again. It's not raining as bad on this section as it was. It's not raining hard here, but there are some dark clouds up there. Dark clouds on their way, and the light's on. And Chip Robinson is passed by Wayne Taylor. And there's Juan Fangio taking his long walk back to the pits and see Mr. Gurney, keeping his helmet on to keep a little drier. Here's Brian Bonner heading in. Brian has locked up the back wheels. He's spinning the car. Keeping Jeff Werner does make it safely by, but the track is becoming treacherous now. Backing up in reverse gear is engaged. He will continue. No tip. And there's our leader. The number 33 car has spun. Harry McCarthy backs up. He's bent the wing very slightly. Blocking. He's going to make it, oh, so close to the wall. But his car, too. I don't think that wing is going to affect anything. Look at this. No traction at all. And look, it continues on the same turn for Jeff Rabham. That may be a one-in-a-lifetime shot. Rabham so rarely makes a mistake, which shows you how bad the track is. Almost to a dangerous point right now. That's the Jaguar of Raul Boisel. Very wisely, he's the first one in the pits to change to those rain tires, so you know his teammate Davey Jones is not going to be too far behind and more problems for Parker Johnstone. And thankfully, very light problems. He did not come close to heading a wall as Perry McCarthy and Brian Bonner both made it safely past. Perry McCarthy does continue to lead this race in very bad conditions as all of the cars are now heading towards pit lane. So in mass, they are starting to make their move for the rain tires as the weather becomes the chief consideration, the dominating factor in the race right now. The, the lack of traction is showing. Look at how slowly Perry has to come into pit lane, almost at a walking pace, and yet the car is still sliding. So the leader now in the pits for a change of tires, Davey Jones of Team Jaguar, has already made his pit stop. And let's go down to the leader's pit with Brian Hammond. Here's the leader, Perry McCarthy, coming in to change tires. He will take off the slicks. The rain tires will go on. Perry had been tiptoeing around this racetrack, trying to make it around. Slicks on a wet track do not work at all. Now remember, if it would dry out, these tires will burn up in a hurry. They'll have to come back in and change back to the slicks. Another interesting point. 
This is too early in the race. They cannot fuel here and make it to the end of the race. They will still have to make a fuel stop to make it the entire distance. Perry McCarthy has the rain tires on, and the pits are so tight, you can see he's having trouble getting out of the pits, and away goes Perry McCarthy. So the new leader is Jeff Brabham, car number 83 of Nissan, but don't forget he is yet to make his pit stop. And now the yellow flag is out for this reason, to move the car of Juan Fangio II. And this is what happened to Juan. Watch at the top of the screen here. You'll see him coming down the straight. Look at the back of the car, snaking. Now he's around backwards, totally out of control, and slams the wall here. Does a lot of suspension damage as he slides right out of range and into one of the safety barriers. These tires here are put there just for that purpose. You see, as he hit them, they actually slid back, absorbed a lot of energy, and keeps the drivers safe. So on Fangio, the second gone for the day, and the leader now finally comes in for his rain tires, Jeff Brabham. First, it was Perry McCarthy. Brabham now going to the rain tires, so we have another leader, and it's in the Jaguar. Davy Jones has taken over. And remember, he anticipated very early. He was one of the first ones to go to the rain tires. The yellow continues. We'll be right back to New Orleans been completed with Davy Jones in the Jaguar leading Wayne Taylor in the Chevy Intrepid. That is Perry McCarthy, Tom Kendall, and Chip Robinson. The yellow is still out. The rain continues to fall. And let's find out more about that Chevy Intrepid team, what they're experiencing right now very early in the race as we go down to Brian Hammonds. Jim Miller is the owner of the Chevrolet Intrepid team, and rain really doesn't hurt your team, does it? You have good rain cars. Now, I think we're in pretty good shape in the rain, but uh, I'll tell you, on a city street like this, you never know what it's going to be like. So uh, we just assume it was dry, but if it's going to be rainy, uh, I think we're okay as long as we can keep everything out of the wall. Did both cars get through the, uh, the rain shower without altercation? No problem at all. In fact, we picked up a couple of positions on our pit stops, so we're real happy right now. That's the difference that the crew could make for you, as he mentioned. Picked up a couple of positions with good work down in the pits. So they're looking for the green flag ride now to restart the race. The rain has subsided somewhat. All the drivers, though, have already made the move. They've gone to those rain tires. And they're right now looking for the green as the pace car leaves the track. So we should get the green flag. Here comes Davey Jones ready to restart the race. The leader right now. And Davey Jones having problems. He did not hit the wall, though. He's kept it off the wall, but he can't possibly move the car with all this traffic coming around. He is stuck. Work. Look at the cars. They're coming around the corner, and they're all surprised to see this Jaguar sitting sideways in the track. Davey has moved it a little closer to the wall, and now he's backing up. I don't know what he's trying to do at the moment. Did he, he gun it just a little bit too quickly, Bill? Uh, exactly. He got on the power. And the problem is that with a turbocharged motor, you may have three or 400 horsepower until the turbocharger starts to work. When the turbo comes in, all of a sudden you add 300 horses. Now look at the position that Davey is in. He has stuck sideways across the track. The field on the other side of the track, but time of the essence now for Davey Jones to try to get his car in the proper direction. Oh, just, just the, the ultimate in frustration right now. Look at all the crews watching. Davey can't back up very much as number four, Brian Bonner, has also spun out. Very slippery. You can see that the crews, the, the marshals at the side of the track are waving people, and there's Davey. He still is sideways. These cars have such a poor turning radius, they just do not want to turn very sharply. The, the problem is the pit straight is so narrow as Davey is just trying to get by here. He has stalled the car. He's really getting a lot of trouble right here. There he goes. He's underway once again but has a long way to make up the field. Look at, as the field is coming around, they have almost lapped him. That yellow flag you get to see, I'm sure, is warning this field of Davey just having sat around that corner. So Wayne Taylor is the new leader. Parker Johnstone a lap behind. And look at the problems now for Brian Bonner. No question, his rear suspension giving way. Let's look at that spin for Davey Jones. As Davey came around the corner, he got on the gas a little bit too early, perhaps with this turbocharger coming in, giving him all that, at that time, unwanted horsepower. So Wayne Taylor leading Perry McCarthy now after the problems for Davey Jones. The rain has let up somewhat. And of course, Davey Jones, not the only one to experience problems very early in this race. In fact, Juan Fangio II is gone because of his. Let's find out more with Rick DeBruel. Well, Juan Fangio, traditionally you're a survivor in races like this. What happened today? I was having problems with the brakes. Um, and um, first, 
I was running straight in one turn before. Then I saw that the brake were already working good. Uh, I saw that uh, they came back. But when I arrived to the end of the straightaway, it was nothing there. So I started to pump and pump and pump. And uh, it was something coming, but not, no, um, not all the way, not completely. But the time uh, it was coming, I was already too close. And also the payment was already a little bit worse when that happened. So that was the end for me. So two experienced drivers, Wayne Taylor and Perry McCarthy, now battling it out for first place. Wayne Taylor just barely ahead of McCarthy. And McCarthy, so many have been telling me, an experienced driver in poor conditions. This may aid him, Bill. Well, I, I think the conditions will aid him, but also the type of car that he is in. You'll notice both first and second are normally aspirated cars. These are cars that do not have turbochargers. I made a reference to Davy Jones' problem perhaps being all this horsepower coming in at once unexpectedly. When you're driving a car like what these two fellas are in with normally aspirated Chevrolets, you can feed in exactly the amount of power you want. You can see them, they go around, they get very gentle slides. There's nothing violent. And they're a little easier, although not easy, but a little easier to drive in the rain. You can see that slide of Perry McCarthy that Bill was just alluding to. Almost like they're easing up on the brakes. They anticipate that type of slide. There's Chip Robinson. He is just barely ahead of the lights leader, David Tennyson. Leading at the ripe old age of 22. What a great start he has on his career. So the rain letting up. Looks like the sun may even break through. Well, the sun is breaking through right now on those Nissan. The lights are on. Wayne Taylor still continues to lead Perry McCarthy in the larger division. Tommy Kendall running third. In the lights, it's Tennyson on top of Morgan. We'll be right back to New Orleans. The leader, but he spun out if you've just joined us. Now restarting, he has dropped all the way back to ninth, and Wayne Taylor almost lost the back end of his car, still with a very slight edge over Perry McCarthy. Welcome back once again to the Nissan Grand Prix de Mardi Gras. We're in New Orleans, and you can see the sun starting to shine through, so now that course can start to dry a little bit. Now, in a very narrow course like this, Bill Adam, how do you set up a pass? Does it take a lap or two before you can really accomplish it? Yes, generally the safest way to do it is just, I look at this almost like sprint cars out here. Lots of sideways action off these corners. What you try to do is to watch for a weakness in the car right ahead of you. Obviously, all Wayne Taylor can do from that number 64 in Trevin is to occasionally glance in the mirror, but to make sure not to focus a great deal of his attention. Harry McCarthy, following him, may watch for where Taylor gets on the brakes a little early, where he tends to slide. And if he does anything twice at the same corner, that'll be the weakness that McCarthy looks for. They call him the racing nomad from England. And what a shock it would be. What a development of Perry McCarthy was to overtake Wayne Taylor and win this race. Uh, I would expect it. Oh, look, an incredible slide off the corner there. He was feeding all the power. Must have had his hands well crossed. He obviously wants to try and get by under acceleration out of a corner. I don't think he will try an outbreaking maneuver because that entrapment is so strong there. Don't forget the drivers are still on their rain tires. The rain has come to a complete stop, and now the track will eventually start to drive very rapidly. Yes, and as the track dries, that's going to develop more and more temperature in the rain tires. That's the point where things start to get very dangerous, is that you don't want to... And number 65, that's Tommy Candle. He has missed a corner, but there's obviously no damage on the car. He will continue when he pulls out right in front of Charles Morgan's light car there. No damage on Tom Candle's car at all. But at the same time, Bill, of course, he has lost ground again to the cars running number one and two. 64 is Wayne Taylor in the Chevy Intrepid. And in the Spice, it's number 33, Perry McCarthy. Wayne Taylor does enjoy something of a luxury by being in the lead, but the second-place car of Perry McCarthy may have an advantage. He can watch what happens to Taylor's car and thereby judge his own driving. And if he sees Taylor sliding, he'll know to put on the brakes a little earlier. So he may get a shot at passing by watching for a mistake from the car right ahead of him. He is looking for his spot right now. As you can tell, Perry McCarthy, it looks like he's ready to take some chances. Yeah, I think he's getting very close. You can see he darts out of line little bits, just trying to occupy Taylor's mirrors. And again, any sort of a lapse in concentration that he can create will help him get past. Now, you talked about darting off his line. Is there such a thing as riding a line on a track? like this 
normally there is. And it's, once again, McCarthy just pulls out a line a little bit, trying to get some of the color, the blue and white color, filling up the mirrors of the interest. But what sometimes will happen on a damp track is to get offline, you're going to get onto a more slippery surface. These big, fat rain tires throw up a tremendous spray. And by doing that, they're drying out the line. So at a situation like this, I think McCarthy will more likely follow the Intrepid's tracks rather than try and go outside of at any dangerous points. Taylor continues to run first. Not by much, though. Perry McCarthy in second. Jeff Rabman, the Nissan, going third. And right now in fourth, my old boy Zelda the Jaguar further behind. It looks like he's trying to set up a pass. This may be an area where it'd be quite good to do it. It's right down here. There is a runoff area, so if he makes a mistake, he won't hopefully put himself out of the race. Again, the car just snakes off the corners. They're right on the edge of traction. McCarthy closing up a little bit under braking here. And losing it. Oh. Perry McCarthy barely kissing into the wall. He has locked up those brakes, has slid right straight through, but watch in the background. Where is Jeff Brabham? Can McCarthy get that thing into reverse and get it backed up to save second place? I see the lights of the Nissan coming. Here comes Jeff Brabham. Ready to take over second place, and he will. Perry McCarthy cannot get it going. I think McCarthy has stalled the car. We cannot hear the car run. There he's lost third. You're on board the Jaguar of Raul Boisel, currently running in third and trying to catch up with the second place car just ahead. You can see Jeff Brabham in the Nissan. And welcome back once again to the Nissan Grand Prix to Mardi Gras. Joel Myers along with Bill Adam. Also in the pits with us, Brian Hammonds and Rick DeBrule. You see the lights on. They continue to be on on Jeff Rabin's Nissan. And Raul Boisel right now in third place. The sun is burning through. The track is starting to dry, but still Bill Adam, wet spots on the track. Does it create enough glare that maybe they also see some blind spots there? Well, it, it may create a glare as the race goes on if these wet conditions continue because as the sun gets lower, that's where the problem exists. The biggest problem presented by the wet spots is if you try and pass somebody. Obviously, if you are ahead of somebody, you take the driest line possible. You want the greatest amount of traction. So the following car has to take a huge chance at going off that line. Look at the tracks we can see right here. There's very obviously a dry spot, and to go off that dry area, then you've given up half of your traction. Very, very risky. So Bratton continues to run second. Boisel third on the light side, though. David Tennyson continues to lead, but barely, just barely, over Charles Morgan. This battle heating up now. And when you look at the light division, as opposed to the larger cars, the GTP division, do the lighter cars have problems in these wet conditions? I think the light cars actually have something of an advantage on a track like this, and particularly in the wet conditions. The big cars can't use all of their horsepower, whereas these cars can, and they're a lot easier to drive. They're physically easier because they don't weigh as much. Tennyson looking for his first solo win, still on top of Charles Morgan. Our full center in the other division, Perry McCarthy, gone. Lost his car on the turn. Let's find out why. Perry McCarthy out of the race. Uh, what happened, Perry? Well, when the rain came, the, the car was absolutely awful in the rain. So I backed off and still made a couple of mistakes after I backed off. Come in for the wets, went out, and uh, really I wasn't trying to overtake Wayne. Just keep in pace. I must have made a mistake because uh, I slid off. The engine uh, stalled the engine and I couldn't get it back started again. So I feel very sorry for Danka and the Spice team and uh, feel like a bit of an idiot, really. Quite frank, to say the least. We're aboard Raul Boisel's Jaguar. He's currently running third, the young man from Miami. And look, a problem now for Chip Robinson. Well, this is totally unexpected. The Nissans are perhaps the strongest cars in the race. These are cars that have been very carefully worked by the Nissan crew. We don't know what this could be. There is rarely any weakness. Uh, my engine just cut out. My engine just cut out. Are you running at all? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. So it is stalled, and Chip Robinson, as you heard, we've been monitoring his radio communication with his pit crew, cannot get it going. And now, Jeff Rabble, his teammate, running second, ready to move by him and wondering what is going on. Well, Chip Robinson right now effectively out of the race. Check all the circuit breakers, Chip. All the circuit breakers. Also, try ignition off and on. 
Well, apparently they do have an electrical problem in the car. The crew chief is telling him to check circuit breakers, which sometimes can pop out. They are loaded electrical components in the car, and the bumpy nature of this track might have knocked one off. And there's the leader, Wayne Taylor, in the Chevy Intrepid, lapping Chip Robinson. As Robinson's trying to figure things out, is it an electrical problem? It appears to be that way. Taylor right now on lap 33 of this timed event. He's ahead of Jeff Brabham with a good margin now in front of Brabham. And Raul Boisel running third. Again, to go back to something that we made a reference to earlier, is the Intrepid seems to be a car that has sprung a little more softly than some of the other prototype cars. This may help. Chip Robinson is still experiencing problems, and for the safety of the other drivers, Marshall's pushing him effectively off the race course. As Davy Jones heads into the pits for a change of tires, let's check in with Rick. Well, Davy Jones comes in. He is now the first car that is going to have the rain tires taken off and switched back to race slicks. Now, these are not the same tires that took off the car the first time he came in. This is a fresh set of tires that they are putting on. The idea here is, as the track is drawing out, those rain tires are overheating. They're not having any grip at all. So they come in, they take the rain tires off, put in a little more fuel, play the windshield off, and then it is right. So a new set of tires for Davy Jones, and you're looking at the lights leader coming at us right now. That is 22-year-old David Tennyson. So now it's going to be a steady stream of drivers going into the pits to change from the rain tires back to the slicks with a dry track. And here is the leader, Wayne Taylor, doing exactly that. Let's check in with Brian Hammonds. Here's Wayne Taylor. Wayne Taylor is now going to the slicks. The decision has been made. The rain tires come off. The slicks go on. Rain tires do not last very many laps on a dry race course. You can find a dry line and go quicker with the slicks. Wayne Taylor now is off the jacks, and away goes Wayne Taylor. So Wayne Taylor is still the leader, and there's the second-place runner, number 83, Jeff Brabham. Now let's see if Brabham can take over the lead as he passes pit row. Yes, Wayne Taylor not out quite yet. There you see Wayne Taylor just a little bit late as he loses the lead to Jeff Brabham. But let's not forget, Bill, that as Wayne Taylor has to wait with traffic coming, but Jeff Brabham still has to put on the slicks once again. Very much a gamble at this point. How early do you put the slicks on? How long do you leave the rain tires on? Watching Wayne come down here, what he has to do now is try and get his tires up to temperature as quickly as possible. This will take a lap or two, so that is a luxury that this man, number 83 Jeff Brabham, will enjoy. He can still go as fast as possible while Taylor gently comes up to speed. That's part of the Chevy Intrepid team. Everything is computerized. They are monitoring everything that goes on right now with the driver and everything inside the car. And now it looks like the leader, Jeff Bradham, is coming to the pits. Let's go down to Rick DeBruel. Well, Jeff Brabham comes in just ahead of Raul Boisel. They're going to go ahead and make the changeover, put the tires on this car. Now the question is, is this the top they need for fuel? They're going to put the fuel in as quickly as possible, get those tires on. Now we turn and we see that Raul Boisel has also come in. They're doing the same thing with him taking those rain tires off. They're so confident that it's completely dried out, they're not going to what are called intermediate tires. Those are slicks that are hand grooved. These are straight slicks, no grooves whatsoever. They think the track has dried out enough now. Now, as we see Raul Bozell still in the pits, Jeff Brabham gets out just ahead of him. Raul Bozell gets the job done and is now moving back out onto the race course. So there is our new leader, another change, as Tommy Kendall with the Chevy Intrepid team has taken over first place. But remember, Tommy Kendall is also on those rain tires. You'll see the car moving around a lot more than these other cars. The rain tires tend to wiggle a lot because of the loose construction. And Jeff Berner going wide. That enables Wayne Taylor to go inside with the successful pass. So Wayne Taylor has already moved back into second place. He certainly is trying to get his tires back up to temperature as fast as possible. You saw the rear end of his car actually breaking loose, under braking there. A little bit of a risky pass. And now we're looking at Rocky Moran in the Toyota. He's also going back to the slicks. Tommy Kendall finally comes in as well, Bill. So Wayne Taylor with Tommy Kendall going into the pits with an opportunity now to regain the lead in the Nissan Grand Prix de Mardi Gras. And here comes Wayne Taylor. He is just ahead of Jeff Berner, and Jeff Berner, one of those out there that is still on rain tires, one of the few still remaining out there on rain tires. And you'd have to think, Bill, 
bit somewhat of a gamble as there's the lights leader, David Tennyson, going in for a change of tires. And we have just learned that Chip Robinson has his car started once again. Let's get more on that story and go down to Rick DeBrule. Chip Robinson now makes his way into the pit stop. They had taken a spark box out onto the track. They were able to replace it and bring him in. Now, it's been so long, he was still on his rain tires. So the first thing they had to do as soon as they could was get him in, get those rain tires off. Suspension, and uh, you know, what can you do? You just, uh, you know, you try and just drive a real conservative race. We need points. And obviously, we didn't get them, so uh, it's going to be tough. What caused it to break? I don't know. Possibly, you know, the only thing that I can figure with brake suspension is probably the bumps. Uh, the circuit is so bumpy, and uh, our jags are sp sprung quite stiffly, and they don't like the bump. There's the leader, Wayne Taylor, so a rear suspension problem for Davey Jones. It looks like it could be the same for his teammate, Raul Boisel, a difficult day for Team Jaguar. Jeff Brenner finally going in for a change of tires. Rick DeBrule, fill us in. On number five, Jeff Perner brings his car into the pits, and here's a mystery. They're taking off the rain tires that were on the car and putting new rain tires in. So Jeff Perner remains in the car, doesn't change, and they're putting rain tires on. Well, what I think is happening here is a gamble by Tom Milner Racing. They can still see a lot of these clouds in the horizon, and they're thinking that it's better to lose a second or two per lap rather than a minute and a half when they have to do another tire stick. There's the battle. It continues for second place. Tommy Kendall, car number 65, the Chevy Intrepid team. Just barely leading car number 83, that of Nissan's Jeff Brabham. We are now well past the midway point of the inaugural Nissan Grand Prix de Mardi Gras. Very tight race. Wayne Taylor leading his teammate Tom Kendall. There's Jeff Brabham running third right now. And most of the drivers, just about all of them, have gone back to the slicks with the exception of Jeff Herner. This really may play into Jeff Brabham's hands right here. Sometimes, as we saw at the Grand Prix of Miami, you can see the, the normally aspirated cars will have somewhat of an advantage in traffic, not having this turbo lag. But look, what we're seeing is not very much traffic around them. And as a result, Brabham can maintain the momentum of the Nissan, and he will be trying to close up right now on Tommy Kendall. There are the two leaders. Wayne Taylor, car number 64 in the GTP division, the heavier cars, more horsepower as well. And the lights leader right behind him, David Tennyson. Well, just a minute ago, we saw that gamble, that risk that's being taken right now by Jeff Berner to stay with the rain tires. Just about everybody else who's already gone back to the slicks. Let's find out more on that reasoning behind that decision with Rick. Well, Tom Milner is the team owner. You just did something that surprised a lot of people. You brought in a car that had rain tires, put rain tires on to send it back out. Why rain tires? Well, it, I believe that it's probably going to rain within the next five. A light rain is beginning to fall on one half of the racetrack as we welcome you back to the Nissan Grand Prix de Mardi Gras. I'm Joel Myers, along with Bill Adam, Brian Ammons, and Rick DeBrule. The battle for second place continues. Car number 65 in second ride now, the Chevy Intrepid of Tom Kendall, followed very, very closely by car number 83, the Nissan of Jeff Brabham. The youth of Kendall against the experience, the Australian Brabham. And it's been amazing. All season long, we have seen Tom Kendall, a man with really very little experience in a GT prototype car, just doing wonderful things with these vehicles. He belies his youth to a degree that I wouldn't have thought possible. He is showing such maturity. We saw him stave off a tremendous, furious challenge by Raul Boisel in the closing lap at Miami. And here he is, holding the, the IMSA champion at bay, seemingly... Jeff is unable to mount a serious challenge to Tom, but they're both running a very, very hard pace right now. The sky is very ominous right now in New Orleans as it looks like they're ready to open up once again. Remember, Jeff Berner stayed on those rain tires. Look, Rocky Moran coming oh, in. Now Jeff Robinson Jeff hits the wall. And Tommy Candle has gone right straight through as well. Oh, and Jeff Robinson has run into the back of his own teammate's car. They are all off at the end of the street here because of these extremely slick conditions. Look, you see Robinson trying to back up and get out of the way. Jeff Brabham, actually, Jeff does get out of there first. Chip Robinson is blocking Kendall, and Kendall was unable to get out of the way here. He virtually is trapped right here. He can't see what's behind him. He's at the mercy of that flagman right there. Well, Kendall has lost second as he tries to get back into it. And watch out. Charles Morgan is sliding out. Morgan, a great piece of driving there, kept his car totally off the walls. He will be able to continue immediately 
It's right there, Tommy Kendall, and they almost came together leaving that corner. Kendall is back underway. Look at the front of his car. There is no damage appearance, so he is okay. That was some kind of save by Charles Morgan. Here comes the lights leader, David Tennyson's got problems. Oh, everybody is sliding off here. Just, oh, David's very lightly into the wall. He may damage the front of his car very slightly, but he too will not have a problem resuming this race. And everyone having the same kind of problem at the end of this straight. Wayne Taylor, the leader, has done the same. And look at the car going past. The number five car of Jeff Herner. He was brilliant by keeping on those rain tires at his pit stop. Tom Milner saw the rain coming as Wayne Taylor is trying to back up here to get out of the way of anybody else coming. And here we go. Here's another spin. There's Tommy Candle going sideways. He's into the wall very lightly. Look at the front of his car, though. The nose is loose. Two laps in a row, Candle has spun at exactly the same place. This tells you how treacherous these conditions are. There is the leader, Wayne Taylor. Car number 64, his teammate, not far behind, number 65, Tom Kendall, and there's David Tennyson doing problems. He's had problems with pace now. They have both gone off this track again. You can see David backing up. Again, his car looks okay. He's been very lucky two straight times here. But Jim Pace has a problem. Look at the right rear wheel of his car. Strange angle, he has broken the suspension. So Jim Pace, no doubt, gone for the day with rear suspension problems. And another spin for Tom Kendall. Tommy Kendall is beset by spinitis right now. This car does not want to go around court. Look at the rain pouring down here. Dreadful conditions, but this man, number five, Jeff Perner, is the one that is the fastest car on the track. He stayed with the rain tires. It has truly paid off. Here's the first big spin. Rocky Moran and the Toyota going into the wall and look up the straight. You can watch Chip Robinson. He loses the front end of his car and look behind him. Tommy Kendall was frantically trying to get control of the Intrepid, but very smart. Got off the brakes and steered the car past. Now look at the Nissan. They come in to have very heavy contact on that left rear corner of Robinson's car. A view from inside. He slams the wall. His car has stalled. There goes Kendall and that. Bang! The car is right off the ground when Brabham hits him. Chip refires the car, backs it over in front of his own teammate, blocking him there for a moment. And here he is just back and forth trying to get out as quickly as possible. And through it all, Chip Robinson still communicating with his crew back in the pits. Coming in for a coming in for a Check my car over. I hit the wall. I hit the wall. 10 4, we're ready for you. Jeff hit me in the back. Jeff hit me in the back, so look it over. So problems for the Nissan team. Let's check it with the Chevy team. Here's Tommy Kendall into the pit area. He had to wait one lap while Wayne Taylor made his pit stop first. The slicks come off. The rain tires go back on. Tommy Kendall has been out sliding all over the racetrack, waiting while his... We are just about ready to start building the arc here in New Orleans. As we welcome you back to the Nissan Grand Prix to Mardi Gras, you can see the way things have deteriorated while you're away. Jeff Printer, though, you might remember, stayed with the rain tires when everybody else was going back to the slicks. It has paid off. He has maintained third position. And as smart as he was, there is really no help with the visibility. But, oh, and now we got a major problem. Here is a tent. This is a medical tent that has obviously blown right onto the track. They're going to have to do something about this. Very dangerous situation. Burner and Morgan avoided. Here comes the leader, Wayne Taylor. Goes wide as well. That potentially may be the most dangerous thing we have seen today. Not only do we have rain, but there's also some talk of lightning in this area. And there's the lights leader. Car number 19, David Tennyson. The Chevy Intrepid team hoping that they'll be celebrating momentarily. The yellow flag is out now. Well, Tom Milner took a chance, the owner of the car run by Jeff Perner. Let's find out how it went. Well, Tom, you made a gamble. Did it work? Well, it partially worked. We uh, ended up, I guess, in third place. It didn't rain quite early enough, but uh, we're still pleased. It's been the best position we've had so far. We took a chance, and uh, it paid off partially, partially. What are you telling Jeff right now? I told him, tell him to hold his position and be very careful. He had just called in on the radio and said, he, it's impossible to drive, but we also are monitoring the IMSA channel, and they are telling us that the pace car is out and they're red flagging the race. 
Well, the red flag that, that Tom is referring to is a flag displayed for emergency conditions. The fact that this medical tent is on the track certainly qualifies as an emergency. No question about that. And the visibility at almost zero for the drivers as Wayne Taylor continues to lead in the GTP division. And there are the two leaders right now, right behind the pace car. Wayne Taylor to the right, to the left, David Tennyson looking for his first solo win. And it appears he's just about got it. Well, I think David's keeping his fingers crossed right now. As we're looking at his car, his windshield wiper certainly is not working properly. And the inside of that glass is very badly fogged up. So his visibility must be about zero. So this could potentially be the final lap as they follow the pace car. Wayne Taylor, the leader in the GTP division, followed by Jeff Rabham, Jeff Berner, and Tom Kendall. And on the light side, David Tennyson, the leader. In second place, it's Charles Morgan as the rain continues to fall with a good deal of velocity. Part of the problem is we can see some prayers going up that this may be the last lap. Part of the problem is just that this is just going to get worse and worse. Let's keep an eye on this flagman here. And he's bringing in the yellow. The checkers out. So Wayne Taylor wins the Nissan Grand Prix de Mardi Gras in the GTP division. The Chevy Intrepid team and Wayne Taylor both picking up their first wins. And it's the first American-built and American-powered car to win a GTP race since 1977. Celebration. An all-American kind of day, the Chevy Intrepid team. Just moments ago, the 22-year-old from Toronto, Canada, David Tennyson, appreciating the work and celebrating the work of his crew, the combined effort as he wins the lights division of the Nissan Grand Prix de Mardi Gras. And David Tennyson winning our Minolta photo finish. Let's go down to Rick with the winner. Well, David Tennyson, uh, this is Harley Victory Circle. We're standing just over an overhang right here trying to stand out of the rain. But this is a first victory, and it's got to feel good. Yeah, you know, it's the first one I did solo. I drove the last race with Ken Knott, and uh, we won that one. Parker spun and crashed, and this is just a real win. We went out, we ran him down, we were the fastest, and... Uh, it's a good, you know, it's just fantastic. This was a race of survival. Absolutely. When it started to rain, I just set into a pace, and uh, the Denon Ferrari handled well all, all race. And as well, when it started to rain, it was good for our engine because we don't have any torque, and we have all up up end power, so it was really easy for me to drive. Well, David Tennyson, congratulations on a first victory. It must feel great. Thank you very much. So David Tennyson beats out Charles Morgan of the light division. Not and Velez behind them. And then Parker Johnstone in fourth. The overall final results, Wayne Taylor, the winner in the GTP division. The winner overall, ahead of Jeff Brabham, Jeff Brunner, and Tom Kendall. Let's go down now and meet Wayne Taylor with Brian Hammonds. Quickly changed back in the dryness of the paddock area. Wayne Taylor, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, we, we've been saying we, we don't know what it takes to win one of these races. And I, I went into the, into the beginning of this race a very depressed man. Uh, as you know, we were really off the pace all weekend. I had a heat problem the first day. I didn't manage 20 laps. And then I qualified seventh, which is the worst qualification I've had all year. And uh, just before the race, I said to Jim, I said, Jim, I want to take a chance in this race and I want to make a major change to the car. And he said, OK, let's speak to Bob, the uh, designer. And we discussed it and uh, we made the decision to, to make a big change and we did. And it paid off. You set the car up for the rain. You gambled and won, huh? Well, I, 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 I set the car up to make it easy to drive. Um, it was really difficult to drive in qualifying stuff. And I, I, I thought it was a two-hour race. And I thought the only way to do it around here is to make the car easy to drive. And that's what I did. I made it very easy to drive. And uh, you know, everything worked well. Congratulations to Wayne Taylor. And based on Tommy Kendall's finishes in the three races of the Nissan Triple Crown of IMSA, the second in Miami, third in Mid-Ohio, and fourth this afternoon, Tommy Kendall wins the Tiffany Trophy as the first winner of the Nissan Triple Crown of IMSA. A recent UCLA graduate, very, very consistent in all three races. And special thanks to the people at Crescent City Motorsports, our friends at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, and Miami Motorsports for all their help. So Wayne Taylor wins it this afternoon. For Bill Adam, Brian Hammonds, and Rick DeBrule, I'm Joel Myers. Thank you for joining us for more great racing from New Orleans.